Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my refractory cement out of the sodium silicate that we made in the last video. The only reason this is blue compared to the clear stuff that I actually made in the last video is because I made a whole lot more of it and I used indicating uh, silica gel so it's got the blue, the blue color to it. <clears throat> uh, there's no problems with that at all, it's not going to change anything, it won't affect anything so you don't have to worry about that if you're using indicating silica gel and it comes out blue, there's no issues. So this is what we made yesterday, it's actually kind of thin, I uh, thinned it out. The stuff in the last video is how you want to have your sodium silicate to make this refractory cement. You're going to want to make about 500 milliliters worth of it. Maybe, it doesn't really, honestly it doesn't really matter, but the, uh, the more the merrier to a fine line. I use about half a bag of play sand, give or take 20, 25 pounds to about 500 to 750 milliliters of the sodium silicate solution. You mix those two together really, really, really well and you can use it as is. If you want to take things up one step further, you can go to your Home Depot, Canadian Tire, what have you, and you can buy this high temp uh, stove and furnace cement. Now you don't need much of this either. To about 20, 25 pounds, maybe need two three big scoops of this tops and it'll it'll add to the strength it'll help the the mix harden on its own without being cured with carbon dioxide or with uh, heat curing so if you want to make some irregular shapes like a, a new lid to my foundry I'm going to be making it with this when it comes to molds you just got to kind of be creative but anyway let's get started here for an example too, this is what we're making. This is a stress test. I fired it till it was red hot. Um, you can see the color, the discoloration there. It's actually bleached where it's gotten fired. Like red, red hot. This is glowing red hot. It's strong. Can't break it. Like, unless you really try. good quality stuff. Now you can break it, obviously, but it's really durable. And that, might I add, is without adding this stuff. So that's just straight sodium silicate and play sand. And it comes out remarkably well. Now I made this one and it cracked on me when I was unmolding it and the crack actually got worse over time so it broke into two pieces when I was testing the strength of it just because I didn't really know the strength of it. So here I am, I'm making another one, only this time I'm going to add this stuff to it. You can make all kinds of shapes, you can make really high temperature crucibles if you want, if you're trying to melt iron, cast iron, things like that. You could use this to make an arc furnace. Make whatever shapes you want, really. Possibilities are endless. You just have to use your imagination. So you're going to want a nice big container to mix with. You're going to want a drill with some kind of paddle mixer. You can do it by hand, but this is going to this is going to really help. Now this is perfect sand to start with. I don't know if you can see here. It's damp, right? From right from the bag, it's damp. If it's uh, completely dry, you're gonna want to dilute your um, your sodium silicate about 50% with water, and that way the sand will come out damp when it's done. You don't want this mixed like wet cement either. I'll keep that. Uh, 
with a half a bag of play sand with some big rock in it. We don't want that. Spread it around all evenly in the bottom. Now one thing I did with this stuff too beforehand just to make it mix into the solution a little bit. I have two containers of this. This one was empty. So what I did was I put a, I actually put a bunch of sodium silicate in here, really concentrated, really thick stuff, and I mixed this like watery cement. So I mixed up the high temperature stove cement with some water in here, a whole bunch of sodium silicate and a little bit of sand. I'm going to put all of this into my mix here. And because I have so much sodium silicate in that stuff already, I don't need to add much of this, but about 150 milliliters or so. We're going to take our drill and we're going to mix the shit out of this. Now when you think you've mixed it enough, mix it for another 15 minutes. So I'm going to be here, I'm going to be mixing this for a little while, and we'll get back to you. Alright, so I've been mixing my sand here for quite a while, and you can't really tell I've done anything to it at all, which is what we want. You don't want any clumps, you don't want any clumps of sodium silicate in there. It basically still looks like beach sand. Now at this point what you can do is a little bit of a flame test. You take a little bit of it, place it down on something that can stand some heat. As you can see it falls apart. Take a torch to it and fire a small piece of it. You don't have to fire it very long. Now it's obviously going to be red hot, so be careful. And it's obviously not fired all the way through. But you can see it's hard. It's actually pretty hard on the surface where it was fired. So, we know this mix is good and ready to use. Inside, fill out our mold. So, like I said, with the molds, you got to be kind of creative. This is the top of a five gallon bucket, this is a separating um, plate out of a pressure cooker. Uh, I cut this hole in the middle of it. I don't advise cutting a hole in the middle of the separation plate of your mother's pressure cooker if you're doing this at home. This is my pressure cooker, so I can do what I want. I cut the hole in the middle of it so that I can take this whole thing afterwards, set it on top of my um, foundry, because it's going to be my foundry lid. I'll take this electrical tape off and take the, the bucket off very gently try to make a really nice sand castle pull this center piece out which is going to be my center of the mold for the exhaust port I'll pull that out and then I'll fire it I'm going to run it on a low fire because this is aluminum and it's an aluminum smelting furnace we don't want to melt this base we want it to hold the sand there while it's fired we're going to let that fire for a long time a couple of hours on low very low flame 
and it'll harden up. When it hardens up, you can pull it off. The aluminum's going to cool a lot faster. It's expanded now. It's going to cool down. The sand isn't really going to shrink. The aluminum will basically pop off the bottom of it. Set this down. As you can also see, I've put a mark around the inside. Uh, I'm a little bit OCD. So this mark just so I know that it's level all the way around and I've done the same in the top of the exhaust. Plate. It doesn't matter. You don't have to do that. But if you want it to look nice at the end, there's a tip for you. So we're going to put this in the center. We're going to start loading in our sand mix. This stuff can be a little bit irritating to your hands. You might want to wear gloves. But I'm in HVAC as well. I mix cement with my hands all the time. Probably shouldn't. Like I said, it'll dry out your fingers and stuff. But, hell, you only live once. But you might want to wear gloves. Optional as well, is you can put some rebar in here. Even like filler rod for uh, welding material. But you gotta be careful because steel expands. This brick doesn't really expand and it might actually crack it. So in this one, I'm not gonna put any rebar. I'm making it thick enough to suffice for it. Filling this up way past my fill mark because I'm going to tamp it down with a piece of aluminum or steel or whatever you have that's heavy back down to my fill line. I'm going to spread this around as evenly as possible. It's going to make it making it flat after a little bit easier. Like I said, use whatever you got, a chunk of aluminum. This is a little crucible. I like it because it's round for this, it gets into all the corners. And just tamp it down. And yeah, I know, a circle has no corners. You know what I meant. That. I'm a little bit below my fill line, but that doesn't matter. The fill line is just or was just a reference for me. It's even around the uh, the fill line, about half inch or quarter inch below it. But I tamped it all down. I'm gonna let this sit for a little while, cure up, harden up a little bit, and then I'm gonna pick the whole thing up ever so gently. And like I said, I'm gonna set it on top of my foundry and I'm gonna fire my foundry up. And I'll let it fire with this ring on it for, I don't know, a couple of minutes, five minutes maybe. The center ring I'm going to pull out right away because I don't want it to burn. And uh, it'll have a nice hard shell on it in a couple of minutes. Kind of like uh, when we demonstrated that it hardens with the torch. Uh, another test you can do is hold some of it in your hands. Make a carbon dioxide generator, however you do it. If I have a Kipps generator. You can mix baking soda and vinegar in a gas generator through a pipe, hold some in your hand, 
stick the pipe in your hand and put some gas to it. Keep it there for a minute, two minutes or so, shut the gas off or stop the gas generator or whatever you got to do. Shut off your gas bottle if you have it and open it up and uh, the sand should hold its shape and it should hold it relatively stiffly all the way through. Now it's not going to be fired hard, but it'll be hard enough that you can hold it and you would easily be able to take it out of this mold. I still wouldn't pick something up this big all in one piece. I'd leave it on the aluminum and fire it, but it does help. If you want to make some irregular shapes, say a crucible or something, curing it with carbon dioxide first will work. Now if it doesn't cure, with carbon dioxide in your hand, you're going to want to add more sodium silicate to your sand mix and mix it in really, really, really well. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments section below. If you like this video, click thumbs up. And don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And here it sits on my foundry slowly being fired most of the mold taken away it's just sitting on that aluminum plate it's gonna sit in here like this for a couple of hours uh, you probably shouldn't run these things inside on propane I'm a licensed gas technician I know all about carbon monoxide and everything else I have adequate ventilation in here don't you worry but here it sits Again, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think.